Ligers and tigers and kai wolves? What happens when species come together? Hey guys, Julia here for D News. Evolution is the theory that organisms grow and develop from previous generations of organisms. Many evolution deniers claim that evolution can't happen because we can't see it happen, which is, oh, <laughs> we totally can. While we've discussed some of the ways we can see evolution happening in an earlier video, we can also watch new species form when two animals that are closely related mate. I think it's time we talk about the weird world of animal hybrids. In my video about species, I define species as animals that can reproduce and make a viable fertile offspring. And that's still mostly true. Hybrid offspring generally are biologically less fit than their parents. They usually die for various environmental reasons, and so they often won't go on to make offspring themselves. Biologist Ernst Mayer said successful hybridization is a rare phenomenon. But in the famous words of Dr. Ian Malcolm, life uh, finds a way. Occasionally, a hybrid will pop up that's better suited to the environment than those that came before. And that's what's happening in the case of some hybrids forming in the wild right now. Like the most recent example is a combination of wolves, coyotes, and dogs forming in the eastern United States. Yeah, you heard that right. Wolves, coyotes, and dogs created a canine hybrid. Some call it the eastern coyote, some call it a kai wolf. It all started 200 years ago in southern Ontario when farmers started putting pressure on wolves through habitat loss and hunting. Their numbers started to dwindle. At the same time, the clearing of forests allowed more coyotes to move into the area and the farmers brought along their trusty dogs. So feeling the biological crunch, the wolves started making eyes at other close kin. In an analysis by a biologist Javier Monzon, the hybrid's DNA was found to be mostly coyote, with 25% wolf and just 10% dog. But this combination seems to take the best traits from each animal. The hybrids are street smart like dogs, keen of forest like wolves, and they'll eat about anything from pumpkins to squirrels to even moose. So their wide range and varied diet make them hardy and adaptable to lots of different situations. But they aren't the only hybrids out there. In a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, researchers found a new salamander hybrid that contradicted traditional wisdom. This new hybrid came from a cross between endangered native California tiger salamanders and barred tiger salamanders that were introduced into California in the 1950s by fishermen who brought the larva from Texas to be used as bait. The researchers found that while the native Californian tiger salamander population was declining, the hybrids have actually been doing better over these past few decades, which leads to all sorts of interesting questions for scientists and conservationists. Does the new hybrid hurt or help the native population? Technically, it's muddling up the gene pool, but if it does keep the dwindling California tiger salamander population from disappearing, isn't that a good thing? And mixing up genes can also mix up the map in birds' brains. Seriously, there's a hybrid of two subspecies of Swainson's thrushes in Western Canada. Typically, these two subspecies take two completely different routes when they travel south for the winter. In a study published in the journal Ecology Letters, researchers tracked the flight pattern and migratory route of these hybrids. They found that the birds took a different route than their ancestors. One of the UBC researchers, Kira Delmore, said, instead of taking well-trodden paths through fertile areas, these birds chose to scale mountains and cross deserts. Sometimes that path was sort of in the middle between their ancestors' two distinct journeys. Other times the birds would take one parent's path in the fall and the other in the spring. But some of the researchers think this new route could mean the subspecies is less fit than its parents since it could impact their survival. But because of this new route, the subspecies is reproductively isolated, possibly making it a whole new species of bird. So hybridization, while rare, is really fascinating. To find out the other ways in which we can see evolution happen, Lacey Green and Katie Wayne have the scoop in this episode right here. There are some animals evolving right before our very eyes. Yeah, like wild elephants naturally selecting to have no tusks. It's pretty sad, actually. Also, dig the shirt I'm wearing? Correlation does not equal causation. Get one of your very own, head on over to Four Human People to check out all the nerdy science swag. And if you're a first time buyer, you can use the code DNews for 10% off at checkout. All right, so Liger, Tigon, what's your favorite hybrid animal? And it doesn't have to be one that's found in the wild. Sound off down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to D News so you don't miss a single episode.